Oh, I, I was going to say, I'm so glad that you mentioned that people in this hobby need other men to tell them what to buy, because that is exactly what Card Collector 2 paved the way just eight days ago. He paved the way for not only, you know, for, for people to hype, hype this particular card, but he also paved the other way for other influencers to do a similar thing. Here he is in true hype beast fashion. Says I bought B. John Robinson's best rookie card, ten thousand dollar plus card. Who is B. John Robinson? Well, uh the guy Desmond Ritter, I guess, couldn't get the ball to and why Desmond Ritter got <laughs> traded because Okay. B. John, B. John Robinson is a running back for the Atlanta Falcons, who does have some skill, but I don't know about to the tune of $7,500 for this particular card. And what I believe this paves the way for, I mean, it is probably already in the editing room. This guy Rothscard once, I mean, this guy's boner, Rothscard's boner when he saw this video from Card Collector 2 was from here to Oklahoma. Because let, let me tell, where, where's he at? Columbus, Ohio, excuse me. Because this, what, what Rothscard's is going to do and probably has already done is he's going to take the second best running back to be John Robinson in the last couple of years, or the next hyped running back to be John Robinson, find his stupid effing black finite one of one card. And there's like four of them. There's not, not only just one of them. There's like four of them. You find whatever the one you need to find. You get it. You go over to Kurt's card care. You rub the juice down on it. You send it to your grading company of choice. I don't give a F who you send it to. And you hype it the same way you guys were doing quarterbacks just one year ago. Remember, it was Roth cards who got Jeff Wilson to spend nearly like what, like 30K on some fucking Desmond Ritter cards. Then he came back like a couple weeks. Then he came back a couple weeks later and was like, oh, here's fucking Sam Howell. So the, 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 the video is in the editing room. And if I was still playing fantasy football a lot, I would be like, whoa, he's going to queue up the Lions running back or whatever. And he's going to say, this is a $5,000 card or this is a $10,000 card. Why? Because you guys can't do this with quarterbacks anymore. You tried to do with Mac Jones. You tried to do it with Kenny Pickett. You tried to do it with Justin Fields. You tried to do it with say, Trey Lance. There, there's Rothcards doing it with Sam Howell. Bailey Zappi came in for Mac Jones, and you tried to do it with him. Jeff Wilson tried to do it with Desmond Ritter. You tried to do it with Zach Wilson. You guys could probably think of another half dozen more in the last few years. So this is just a cycle that repeats itself. You can't do it with quarterbacks this year because you're probably gun shy or scared or those cards aren't available. And they're now going to do it with running backs and card collector too. kind of cleared the way for that. And I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing for hobby. Certainly they can, they can hype whatever they want. This inspired me to, I'm going to hype a card and a player today. Later on in this show, I'll go full on Don West, card collector two, Jeff Wilson. I'll hype a guy. You guys can hype B. John Robinson. I'll hype who I want to hype. But what do you think about spending, you've bought a lot of cards lately, spending $7,500 on a running back that I'm not even sure you knew who he was. Uh, I was not aware of who he was. And, and I don't know if it's just, I, I did not catch any Falcons game this year. They just, they didn't play. Maybe they played the Bengals. I can't remember. Um, I, I watched the Bengals. I watched the 49ers. If the team doesn't play that, or they're not one of these elite teams that are on Monday night football, Thursday night, Sunday night, that type of thing. Uh, I, I tend to not, I don't play fantasy. I don't gamble like our buddy C is doing these days. I'm not into all that. So I don't know the, 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 the fourth best running back in the league. And this guy certainly could be a top, top eight, nine, 10 running back in the league. But uh, you know, how many running backs over the past couple of years, we don't have to get into a deep discussion on this, but how many running backs over the last couple of years have really made a huge impact on the hobby? You know, you have, and, and even when they do, you look at like maybe the last one that had any kind of real hype around him was Ezekiel Elliott. I was looking at like Ezekiel Elliott cards have just completely fallen off the map. I mean, he was, he was as hot as hot could possibly be playing for the best team, maybe not the best team, but maybe from a best team, from an in, quote investment standpoint, um, just because the Cowboys are obviously wildly popular and maybe only second to maybe the Steelers or the Green Bay Packers have so many fans and so many people that are into them. And Ezekiel Elliott, obviously, even before he got he got off of the Cowboys, his cards had just completely f fallen off of the map. I can only think like Travis Henry and, and Christian McCaffrey. There was a pretty expensive Christian McCaffrey card in, in the uh, in the auction tonight. And those are two players that two running backs that resonated. It was different when we were collecting when Barry Sanders and Emmett Smith and Thurman Thomas, Jerome and Marshall Falk. 
were like the biggest yeah. guy. Those were the, the guys Danian you wanted Tomlinson. to pull. Ladanian Tomlinson was huge for the in the hobby. Ricky Williams. I mean, those were the cards you wanted to get. Maybe the league switches back that way, just like they changed the rules in terms of hand checking and pass interference, and and certainly passing has gotten more evolved in the NFL. I know they've changed some of the tackling rules uh, this this year, like a specific tackle is is banned and so maybe that uh allows more of the running game to flourish I, I doubt it i just think the rules still cater to teams that go over the top and pass and the days of the Damian Tomlinson or Ricky Williams getting 38 carries a game those days are more or less over only because you know the you know the and even the running backs themselves they don't necessarily want 38 carries because they know their career is going to last about a year and a half if they do that long enough so they'd much rather maybe only touch the ball 15 times a game and last in this league as long as like Joe Mixon or some of these other running backs have kind of hung around like I, like I just don't know about the like a card collector too is more than welcome to spend his money i don't know if he even bought this card he's going to make a couple of money i mean he's got amazingly thirty thousand views on a video so he's going to make what 300 bucks on the video 250 300 bucks maybe on the video whether or not the deal was set up i don't know but it's a it's a it's a second tier running back in this league from a second tier grading company and it it is what it is and and we'll see We'll see where it ends up going. I mean, maybe he he takes this over to Kurt and he he waxes it up into a nine five or a ten. The surface is a nine. There it is. He get that up to a nine five or ten, then all of a sudden he can turn that seventy five hundred into a cool ten thousand. But what's the upside on this card too? I mean, I think that's the discussion that we have to have. You're buying a a, a card for seventy five hundred dollars. What's the upside? What you know? Like I mean, here's Patrick, the downside. Right. Well, yeah, fair enough. But like, what's the upside on a card like that? He comes out and he's hot. Like the the Atlanta Falcons are not going to be knocking down any doors next year. I know that they've got some new players and things like that, but uh, you know, like they're not going to be knocking down the door of what are they? They're in the NFC. Does anybody believe that they're going to be, you know, breaking through the NFC and 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 making the playoffs this time next year? Probably not. So what is this guy going to have to do in order to turn I, again? I know exactly. I know exactly what he's going to have to do. So so let, I I think what could turn this into a $10,000 card is that Taylor Swift breaks up with Travis Kelsey. Oh, there and you go. Starts dating Bijan Robinson. Wow. That is how I think that is how I mean this that's how this card, you know, doubles in value. I think if something something crazy happens. I don't think it's going to so be performance saying, based. So like, you're saying Taylor Swift's going to go from the white meat to the dark meat and and that's what's going to drive that from yep. 7500 up to 10. It certainly generate a lot of eyeballs, I know that for a fact certainly create a good rival uh, rivalry between the Falcons and the chiefs, but I I'm, I'm not spending big money on any football player until somebody beats Brittany Mahomes in a football game, let alone Patrick. I, I won't watch the card collector two video. I spent $7,500 of my mommy's money on a third tier running back grade by a, like a fourth tier grading company. I won't watch this. This doesn't really have, me excited now it does have a lot of the hobby excited because forty thousand views on a on a sports card video is actually quite a few quite a bit it's in, in probably the top one percent in terms of videos that are posted so clearly the hobby wants to see this i don't have any interest in this i don't have any interest in a, a third tier running back who's probably out of the league in two years i don't really care if his card sells for seventy five hundred dollars seems like a lot seems like too much and i don't really care about card collector two after he showed his colors as it related to Mark's cards, proves that he doesn't know how to run a business, doesn't under, understand how to run a business. And from all the intel that we have, well, maybe we'll leave that for another day. But look at him drink that water. Ooh, he's he's nervous, guys. Yeah, Got potion. that nerve, the nerves. Mm. Get that love potion, baby. Continue on, please. Where I'm going is, is you're going to see a bundle of videos here in the next few months, and they've kind of run out of quarterbacks to hype. I mean, kind of the chosen one right now is CJ Stroud. I think some people are clinging on to Anthony Richardson. No, nobody's beaten Brittany Mahomes in a football game, let alone Patrick, but th they keep trying to pull these quarterbacks out of the hat. I think there'll probably be four or five uh, more drafted next week, and we took a picture or we took a look of a picture of Caleb Williams last week. And it looks like he's more concerned about his lip gloss and nail polish color than anything else. But Rothgards right now has the biggest boner in the hobby because he's literally running around calling people and getting these fucking one of one. If you have a black finite one of one of some running back that might get carries in the NFL next year, yep. sell it right now. 
Like if he might get on a practice squad, sell it, call card collector to call Roth cards, call all these fucking influencers and sell it to him. Cause that's, that's going to be the big investment. Cause the quarterback shit, good luck with that. They're going to try to sell you guys on non-skill guys. And I'm sure they'll dip into the wide receivers and the tight ends. That's why I pulled up the Travis Kelsey card. Cause it was like, well, let's see like what, what is one of Travis Kelsey's best cards actually sell for? This should sell for a couple grand. That's why I bid on it. Cause I was like, eh, it's probably worth at least a couple grand. I got outbid. So look for these videos soon. Card entertainment at your absolute finest. And if you have some prism black one of one cards of a running back, get to them soon.